Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi with srlounge.com. Moving on to the file handling tab. Now we have import DNG creation. Now, if you guys use DNG files, then this is actually applicable to you. If you don't, like probably most of us, then you can skip this part. Um, I don't typically use DNGs, but what a DNG is, is it's a digital negative file. It's a standard system that Adobe came up with that's used in other various third-party editing applications. So if you do use DNG files, if you use a lot of third-party applications, you might end up using them. So this gives you a few options. One is to change the file extension just from lowercase to uppercase. This really does nothing other than it's just preferential. Do you like it lowercase or uppercase? Uh, next is the compatibility. So compatibility basically changes the amount of camera options. Like for example, uh, options that are available in camera 6.6 .6 might not be available in camera 4.1 or 4.6. And so if you save the compatibility as 6.6 .6 and later, it could not be compatible with prior versions uh, or software that's using kind of older versions of camera raw. So choose your compatibility wisely. Next, JPEG preview. This is just gonna be the preview that it renders along with the DNG. Um, obviously, the larger preview that you create, the more space and the longer it's going to take to import those DNG files. Next, embed fast load data. Basically, what that does is it increases the file size a bit in order to load up a little bit of data. It stores a little bit of data in the file to help those image previews load faster. Um, I would recommend keeping it clicked if you uh, keeping that option selected if you do use DNG files. I would also recommend selecting embed original raw file. Now this is going to greatly uh, increase the size of your DNG file, but what this allows you to do is actually store the original raw inside of the DNG so that you can extract it at a later point in time if you actually need it. All right, that's it for DNGs. Most of you probably won't have any use for this. Those that do, uh, you guys can make those adjustments. Let's move on to reading metadata. Again, <laughs> most of you probably won't have a use for this because what this is going to do, this treat period and treat forward slash as a keyword separator, it's basically for those of you that are using other programs, you are storing your images in other programs and you're importing them into Lightroom and you want it to be able to read the metadata hierarchies that might have come along with those programs that you already put in those side. So if you're importing straight from a card, straight from your camera, uh, a hard drive, or just from another Lightroom catalog file, this is something that really isn't going to matter at all. So I just keep them unselected because I don't use anything else other than Lightroom. All right, let's go down to file name generation. Um, treat the following characters as illegal. Basically, when you're importing a file, if it sees these characters, it's going to it's going to automatically replace them with whatever you choose. Right now, I have a default selected to dashes, but you can change to underscores or other similar characters if you want. Um, really, again, this is all kind of that preference side. Um, I just leave it on dashes. It really doesn't matter. When a file name has a space, you can either choose to leave it as is, or you can replace with an underscore or a dash. And typically, I'll also replace it with a dash, mainly because this is more web friendly. So SEO uh, web friendly naming is actually not having any spaces between stuff, but having dashes between words. All right, now we're gonna go on to camera raw cache settings, and this is a big one. This should be one that every one of you spend some time in setting the correct amount. But here's what you wanna do. You wanna choose the location on your fastest internal hard drive, okay? Because this is where Lightroom's gonna store all the cache for the images that you're working on. That cache is gonna be used as you move from image to image. It's gonna be storing where uh, all those previews and everything that you're using while you're editing. So if you choose an external hard drive or a hard drive that's slow, it's gonna automatically slow down the performance of Lightroom. You're basically bottlenecking Lightroom to be only as fast as whatever hard drive you're using. So I always use the fastest internal hard drive I have available. Now, because I do so much editing, this is a production machine, I have an internal uh, 256 gigabyte SATA 3 SSD drive, and that's my cache drive, and that's where I edit off of as well. You are better off, if you can, to edit uh, on a different drive than your cache drive, but I don't have that many drives. I only have two SSDs internally. One is for system uh, stuff, one is for all my software, and basically one is for editing and cache. So I keep it all on the same drive, and it runs really, really well. So you can specify your location just by hitting choose. Um, I specified 00LRC just so I know they're all in that one spot on my SSD internally. Next, the maximum size is also really important. You want to choose a size that allows you to basically store all the previews for a standard size job. For example, if your standard size job is say maybe you are a uh, portrait photographer and you shoot maybe 200 images per client and that's how big one single catalog file is, um, well then let's say you're shooting it and your raw file size is 20 megabytes and you shoot 200 of those, then your maximum size for your cache setting, you'd want to be around four gigabytes. So you basically take the total, the typical number of images that your catalog has times the file size for a typical raw file or JPEG file, however you shoot, 
and then make the cache setting, you know, that size or slightly larger than that. Because I shoot weddings, we're dealing with, you know, three, four, 5,000 images at once. I have the maximum size set to 50 gigabytes. That way, every single image in my catalog can have a preview stored inside that preview folder. So when I'm moving from image to image, it's going very, very quickly. Now, if you ever want to delete the cache, you guys can either do it straight from Windows or from the Finder uh, in, in Mac, or you can just hit Purge Cache here, and it's going to delete all those cache files. All right, moving on, we have another setting. This is new to Lightroom 4, which is our video cache settings. So again, this is for editing video files. You can limit your cache size. I would highly recommend that you do so, otherwise it's gonna eat up all of your hard drive space. And then set the maximum size. I'm gonna set it to say 10 gigabytes on here. And I think that's a good amount. Same thing, you have your purge cache option if you need to. All right guys, let's move on and wrap up by talking about the interface tab in the next tutorial.